Ah, what are you doing? I was, uh, <laughs> I was just going to talk to Grace, uh, but yeah, she's in the shower. And... Huh. So, uh, see ya. I'll catch up with you later. Oh, Monsieur Mosley. This place is a fruit bin. I have nothing to say to you. Oh, I think you do, Mr. Sinclair. Perhaps you had better come in. I've learned that you were, in fact, hired by Prince James. Good. But that doesn't excuse your prying into my affairs. You've destroyed my cover. See now, that's the problem with secrets and lies. It's impossible to tell which ones might be relevant until you dig them up and take a good whiff. That's between you and Prince James. But I can tell you that you're treading on thin ice. This is a delicate situation. You might find yourself in very hot water indeed. I'm getting confused. Am I supposed to watch out for thin ice or hot water? Very amusing, I'm sure. We'll see how your cavalier attitude serves you with the prince. Now, what is it that you want? I wanted to talk to you about your bloodline manuscript. How did you know about that? I followed you last night and dug it up. You what? This is outrageous. I hope you can appreciate my motivation. I was in the room when Prince James's son was taken. There's very little I wouldn't do to find him. I can't fathom why an outsider like you was hired in the first place. It's absurd. But now that you've seen my manuscript, I hope you finally comprehend that I am not the kidnapper. It's not incriminating in that regard, no. Where is the manuscript? You didn't remove it, did you? I didn't think it was good for it, being out in that damp ground and all. You must return it at once. Yeah. Uh-huh, I will. But it's at the hotel at the moment, though. Mr. Knight, I suggest you bring it back here immediately. Because if anything happens to that manuscript, Prince James will be very displeased. I will. No problem. Prince James implied that the kidnapping was political. Would the manuscript have anything to do with it? It could. There are those who take exception to the idea of Prince James being on the throne. The throne? What throne? Never mind. Do you know Montreux, the owner of the local vineyard? I know of him, of course. It's a small area. Is he one of yours, by any chance? A Freemason? No. At least he's not Scottish right. Here's what I don't get. Why are you working on the manuscript here? Obviously, you don't need the Templar vibes. There's usually one of us in the area, just to keep an eye out. For what? Treasure hunters? For anything. But why you? There is a certain opposition to the manuscript. The work on it was to be done discreetly. And you figured they'd never suspect you'd work on it here. Something like that. Of course, you've quite destroyed my anonymity. The manuscript promotes Prince James as king of what? Scotland? Oh, it doesn't promote him as anything, per se. It simply lays out the genealogies. He's clearly the best candidate. Best candidate for what? Are you talking about Scottish independence? No. In our modern world, Scotland is a very small principality indeed. England? The Stuarts have vowed they'd never accept the English throne. Well, what then? It's not for me to say. I have to go. As you wish. Bonjour. Hey.
Did you check out the Bloodline manuscript? Yeah, pretty interesting. Where do you want me to start? What's the manuscript say about the Bloodline? The Bloodline thing is major. The descendants of Jesus are called Disposini. Their symbol is the unicorn. Unicorn? Mm-hmm. Supposedly, the horn represents the male phallic symbol, and the unicorn itself represents the fertile Jesus. Well, no wonder the Catholic Church had a conniption. But is there any way this bloodland thing could be legit? Well, there's no reason why Jesus shouldn't have married and had children, unless you believe any kind of sex is a sin. Personally, I don't. And you certainly don't. That's just the land I feed Catholic girls, but go on. Uh-huh. And it's the kind of thing the early church might have suppressed, if for no other reason than to make sure the bishops of the church had all the power and not the descendants. That explains how it might be possible, but it's hardly proof. True, but if it's all a myth, it's a very old myth. The royal arms of Scotland show a Davidic lion of Judah, Disposinic unicorn, and the Jewish fleur-de-lis. So they've believed they were Disposinic from the Middle Ages, at least. What's the manuscript say about the Freemasons? The manuscript came right out and said that the original split between the Templars and the Priory of Sion was over the bloodline. The Priory wanted to support certain French families of Merovingian descent, while the Templars supported the emerging Stuart dynasty. I think it's pretty clear that the Freemasons and the Priory are still fighting over the same issue. Does Sinclair mention the Holy Grail in the manuscript? The Grail represents the bloodline and a kind of noblesse oblige duty to serve mankind. But also, remember what you heard on the train? You heard the kidnapper say San Grael. Yeah? The manuscript says the words Holy Grail were actually a mistranslation. The original phrase wasn't San Grael or Holy Grail, but Sang Real. Sang Real? What's that mean? Blood royal, or royal blood. The Holy Grail is the bloodline, Gabriel. That's what's so creepy. Wow. I wonder if that's what they were saying on the train. It's royal blood. That's what I've been wondering. Kind of brings the whole vampire theory back onto the playing field, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm still not sure I see the connection between Sinclair and Prince James's men. The manuscript did mention Prince James. It, it traced the various branches of the bloodline all the way down to the present day. It was obviously making the point that the Stuarts have the largest, purest amount of the blood, and Prince James is mentioned as the current Stuart heir. Did you get the impression that the manuscript was trying to set Prince James up for something? It certainly went to great lengths about his pedigree. I guess the royal families find that terribly irrelevant. What about rulership? Did it mention anything about a throne? Yeah, actually. It talked about the European Union a lot. How any system of government ideally has both a parliament and a monarchy. You don't think they're trying to... No. No, no, no. Position the House of Stuart as monarchs over the EU. Yeah, I think that's exactly what they're trying to do. Oh, God. No wonder Sinclair is hiding out here. Is there, um, is there anything more in there about the unicorn imagery? Um, a bit. You know all those medieval tapestries that show a unicorn in a garden or a, a unicorn being hunted? Yeah. Supposedly, they all represent the disposony being suppressed by the church. Oh. 